Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Keith Walker from Northwest Local Land Services, and I'm part of the Natural Resource Management Team um, that's associated with our grant funding and our operations across the region. Thanks everyone for making the time to um, um, to attend our webinars. This is the first of a series of three webinars that will be run um, from today, the 22nd of July and the 29th of July. Um, now, as you enter the, the webinars today, we've got poll questions on your screen that will just pop up. And if you could answer those poll questions as we go, um, they'll be held there for a little while. We're trying to get as much input as we can from yourselves within our webinars. Okay, um, so yes, you're all on mute and you're also, um, we've, we've closed down the, um, um, the actual video itself. Um, just our presenters will be um, on the, the video for folk to see this afternoon. So um, the webinar will also be recorded. So for the folk who can't make it today, um, we've got an option for them to um, um, to be involved with our webinars at a later point in time that suits them. So um, in terms of um, acknowledging country, um, I'll certainly begin by acknowledging our traditional custodians today on the, on the land on which we're, we're meeting today, uh, the Kamilaroi people, and pay my respects to the elders past, present, and the elders who are emerging. Okay, um, so the purpose of the Check Ready Grow uh, webinar series is to highlight um, some opportunities for uh, for grant funding, for also the um, the natural resource management side of things that Northwest Local Land Services offers across our region, and to tie in um, opportunities through agricultural advisory services and through our regional agricultural land care facilitators. Now, um, we've also got Beck Feng, who you can see up on the, uh, the screen there as our facilitator for the, um, the content for each of our webinars. Beck is fantastic at what she does. The stuff that's in her head about the topics we're going to cover is brilliant. And she will lead us through each of those webinars um in the professional way that we worked last year as well so thanks very much Beck. look forward to um uh, working through these webinars with you so what we're trying to do is bring both business and our natural assets together um, and look at our goals and the content that beck has has got for us will lead us through all those different steps we're also going to have um, on our website, which you've all registered from, there's a range of information about our grant funding. Uh, we've got a fact sheet and we've also got the, um, the range of topics or, or projects that you could um, have a look at for your enterprise. Now, um, if we can, um, if you have a question, if you can just put those questions up as a question and not as um, a chat. Um, if we go into the go to platform, that slide that there is, that is shown there now, uh, the most important um, button there is that high or show control panel. So you can click that and it'll bring that control panel out or hide it on your screen. Um, so if you um, you want to have a bit of a look at that, a bit of a play with that as we go through the webinar to get familiar with it, um, those are the main functions for today um, for our, our webinar. Okay, um, you can see down the bottom there, there's an area for questions. So um, yeah, just um, fill in that and Leonie Coleman is, um, and Michelle Cummins is is behind what we're doing here today with support, and they'll be looking at the, the questions as well. Certainly, I'd like to acknowledge the NRM team and the uh, Ag Advisory team, Michelle and Beck, for all this work that's gone into the, each of these webinars. Thank you very much. Okay, so getting on to uh, our funding streams. 
onto um, our next slide, we're looking at how our funding works. We've got two funding streams, which is Catchment Action New South Wales. Now those projects are funded to June 2021. And that's Check Ready Grow, that program falls under Catchment Action. Now we've also got complementary funding under the National Land Care Program. Um, that funding runs to June 2023. So, and that covers resilient agriculture, Brigalow woodland, Ramsar wetlands, and region honey eaters. So on the next slide, we've got an actual, um, an outline of what sort of activities you could be looking at to be funded. Now, the good thing here is that we've got a whole menu of activities that could be funded under a, an application. Now, if we were looking at, say, earthworks under Check Ready Grow, we need to look at, if we're looking at um, fixing soil erosion, we have to couple that back into the natural resource management outcomes that uh, the project will identify and address across the enterprise. This earthworks are not a standalone thing. And it's the same with the habitat management down the bottom for Check Ready Grow, for Brigalow, and for Ramsar Wetland Condition. We're looking at potentially doing floor and fauna surveys to find out um, what you've got on your place. Um, it's very difficult to manage something you don't know you've got. So, um, but that habitat management, those surveys have to be coupled with other activities that are changing the management focus towards more of a natural resource management outcome. So we'll run through these a little bit further. Um, for webinar two and three, now that we've, we've canvassed this straight up in webinar one, we'll go through a little bit further in the detail of how you develop an application in those subsequent um, webinars and try and help people to consider their natural assets and how well they'll fit in with the production side of the enterprise. So you will have assistance and certainly um, on uh, the website, we'll have uh, contact names and the people who will um, help you through those application processes. That's also found on our fact sheet. So I think um, at this point, we can um, move on to our next um, next slide. And I'd like to hand over to Beck. Thanks again, Beck. Looking forward to the content of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Keith. Um, and thank you to um, Northwest Local Land Services for having me on board. Um, Leone, would we be able to launch the poll to find out where um, the 50 amazing landholders from across the Northwest have dialed in from? Sure thing, it's getting launched now. So I'll just count everyone in. I'll give you about five seconds to answer. Um, the poll's open now. So if everyone can just um, answer there where you're from and they'll give you five, four, three, two, one. And I will close that. And Excellent. then we will we share are... the results for you as well. There you go. Did we get many of our 50 in the... Um, oh yeah, okay, great. So yep. nice to suggest that the North Local Land Services funding is staying in the Northwest. Good job team. And um, well done to those who, you know, thought they'd jump on board to an amazing resource that Northwest Local Land Services have facilitated. Um, as Keith said, I had the privilege of working with um, this team last year where we ran the Check Ready Grow um, program in a little bit uh, of a different fashion because we had the luxury of um, being face to face. So um, have we got Zoom or go to meeting um, for the absolute direct to anxiety, I'm due for a monumental technical blunder. Let's hope it's not today. Um, I absolutely love talking about this stuff. I love talking to landholders and I also love working with professional organisations um, like local land services. So what a lovely place for us to spend um, our lunch hour. Um, so why are we here and where are we headed? Um, 
we are going to cover three modules across the next three weeks, which Keith alluded to. Today, we are going to um, talk about the direction of your business, your values, your vision, your mission and your legacy. Maybe um, some people have spent some time doing this. Um, it would have been done uh, maybe through a business planning um, a session. It might have been through some succession planning, a succession planning program you've been involved in. But the premise is that we, it's really difficult to know where we'd like to spend time. Uh, where our business is going and where we would like to put our resources, uh, where we'd like to invest um, our time, our money, our natural assets and also going forward having a look at some of the opportunities that local land services will put in front of us um, and how that can contribute. Hey Keith, can I ask you to mute your um, screen if I may? Um, there's a little bit of background noise. I'm not sure if it's coming from me. Yep, that's perfect. Um, so how are we going to do this team? Um, I hope that um, after today, you'll decide that we're worth um, dialing back in because we'll be here for the next couple of weeks in the same spot. Um, the other thing that will be made available to you at the conclusion of this session is um, a, a workbook, which will look a little bit like this. I can't see my camera, which is quite refreshing not to see my own face. So, um, But I'm hoping that the information that I'm splashing up, you can see. Um, and we're going to, um, it's going to provide you with some of the tools that you might place in your business. So after we get a handle on exactly where we're going, we're going to have a look at um, the next component of a business plan because really when we have a look at our business um, mission and legacy and our values and our vision, when we bolt that together with um, uh, some goals and some strategies to put those uh, goals in place, so that's where we start talking resource allocation, um, and time frames, milestones, um, some of those things. We're then going to have a look at um, risk management in your business and do an assessment there. And if you have a think about that, if we put all of these components together, um, we're going to end up with a business plan. So um, I'm interested, I'm going to think it's, um, we're going to do another quick poll in a moment, which I might ask if we leave up for a little bit longer than five seconds if anyone's a little bit slower on their trigger finger. But we're going to have, I'm interested to know who has come to the party with a business plan already in place. So this may well be a bit of a refresher or a top up for you. Um, we're going to do it. Thanks, Leonie has just popped up um, that poll um, asking if you have a business plan. Can I ask at this point, if you, when I say business plan, I'm talking a formal document of business plan here. So um, let's leave that slide up for a few moments and we'll, um, uh, yeah, we'll have a think about whether or not um, the people who've dialed in, 52 um, people, majority from the northwest of New South Wales, um, landholders uh, have a formal business plan. Let's count that one down, Leonie. Got five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. And have a look. Oh, okay. So we've got, you know, a third of the group. So well done. Um, I'd be interested, and maybe we could take to maybe give some feedback through questions um, as to what, what made you develop a business plan. Was it a restructure? Was it succession planning? Why have you spent time working on your business? So um, throughout the course of this session, we have Leone beetling away in the background um, to bring some of your uh, questions to. The, um, the surface. So if you do have a question along the way, by all means, pop it in that box where um, Keith explained and Leonie will interrupt and, um, and ask those questions. So it's difficult um, with this many people to keep the session interactive, but we can do that through that question function. Um, can I do a check, uh, Keith or Leonie, how we're going um, uh, audio-wise? We had a, some, a bit of an issue this yeah, earlier this morning. Yeah. Back, you're a little bit fuzzy occasionally, but you're 90% there. It's just 10% every now and then it, it waffles out. But at this stage, we can understand what you're saying. Yeah, thanks, Bec. Okay. Radio. Well, let's um, let's make a bit of a start. And I'm um really let me get the right slides up here, guys. Um, I'm really grateful to local land services 
for allowing businesses across their catchment areas to spend some time working on their business. Uh, what happens, and especially during difficult times, which when we ran these this program last year, uh, we were Warrialda, Summerton, uh, the Liverpool Plains, um, where else did we go team? It was um, Garrah, we're talking the worst drought that hopefully we ever see in living history. Are we done with it? Absolutely not. We're not done with it. But hopefully we are starting to see um, people receive some sort of rainfall along the way and the situation is hopefully a little bit better than it was um, 12 months ago. I'll be honest and suggest that we talk strategic planning, business, um, uh, business professionalism and um, a lot of compliance with primary producers almost every day and they were some of the hardest conversations that I, that I had. Um, that being said, there was a real split crowd, businesses that came to the table seeing this stuff as important and also businesses that came to the table for whatever else was uh, being offered on the day. And we were sort of, I guess, almost like definitely not a draw card. I would have suggested just an art, and, you know, a part of the package. So you came to listen to something else and had to sit through our session. So well done to local land services for um, allowing this session to bubble to the top and, um, and putting it out there for, um, primary producers to um, spend some time working on their business. But more to the point, well done to those who um, have turned up to have a talk about this. It's not just the session before or after the session you want. This is a session that you're here for. So um, the questions that we're hoping to uh, have a look at today is why do business exist out of legacy? Does it exist out of history? Does it exist out of habit? Or does it exist out of passion? And what is the purpose? What is it trying to achieve? What are you hoping if you reach your goals in five years, 10 years and 25 years, what that looks like? Um, what value does it bring? So given that we are working typically in our business every day and usually very, very hard, taking some time to work on your business and fine tune, um, I'm gonna talk about some guide rails uh, a bit later on in the session and fine tune um, that direction can actually be really valuable. And I'm gonna suggest that the businesses that invest time and resources in doing this are actually those who are more productive and profitable um, than those who don't. Um, the wastage um, is reduced, um, but also that sense of achievement and fulfillment is is, is quite real because we have the opportunity to put, uh, put a destination on our journey. So um, some of the lingo in there, you know, what it is, uh, but it's, um, what we have been um, able to see through both um, the drought, but also going forward, COVID, um, I would suggest that regional areas and agriculture have probably been affected less than a lot of other areas in COVID. But crisis does give us the opportunity to down tools um, and reflect and step back um, and have a look at why we're doing what we're, what we're doing. So let's have a think about um, your business vision. Um, and in reality, um, a, a, a vision is really just that vivid mental image, that, that concept, that thought of what your business um, looks like um, at a point in time in the future. So um, have a think about, we're gonna talk next week about goals, but what are your aspirations? Why are you doing what you're doing? What's making you bounce out of bed every day? Um, what is the roadmap? What, where is the bus that you are loading into and your team are loading into every day? Where is it leading? Um, what it will do is it will provide um, inspiration. Um, to allow you to make decisions. It'll allow you to, again, we talk about the allocation of our resources. We know that um, a potential outcome of, um, of this series is to actually have a look at some funding that might be available to, towards both your natural um, uh, resources and assets, but also your, your business assets. So where are you interested in some help and support um, in that way as well? Um, usually that business vision is long term and it um, doesn't necessarily undergo a lot of changes or revision, revisions during the life of your business. So that being said, we might have some shorter uh, operational goals that are up, up, um, updated from year to year. But the vision is, is it's about taking that um, that perspective, that long-term perspective. Um, in your uh, in the notes that um, you'll be that will be made available after the webinar, there's 
questions in there that'll help you frame up what your vision is. And it's asking what you're trying to achieve and allowing words such as it might be profitability, it might be sustainability, is it ethical, is it organic, is it um, productive? What are the words that you could use to start to describe the way you would like your business to look um, at a point in time? Also, it might be it needs to be sustainable, it needs to be scalable, it needs to be saleable. So what are the words that you would start to use um, to explain exactly what you wanted your business to look like at a point in the future? And again, there's those questions in that, um, in that workbook that will help you decide um, what your business vision might be. The next thing um, that we could look at is um, more the concept of what your mission is. Why is it that your business exists? This is the real why of your business. So what is it doing for you? What is it doing for your employees? But equally as importantly, what is it doing for your customers? So what um, value does your business add? And look, um, you know, we're aiming to feed and clothe a great nation. So really our mission for a lot of us um, in farming is the same um, and can be quite clear and direct. Um, and so it might be that it's your uh, vision and your values either side of that mission that frames up, um, frames up what you do. Um, again, some questions um, in these notes that will allow you to map out why, the why of your business, that gut churn, that core directive of your business um, and where what the actual purpose is. And again, um, my um, interest is in pushing people away from doing things out of history. Rather do things that have been done, do it because it comes with a sense of purpose and a mission and a vision. So um, some thoughts there around the value that you uh, bring to yourself and others um, will help frame up your mission. Um, one of the next uh, concepts, and I don't know, um, Leone, is there any questions um, that have come through around that stuff? Or does anyone have any questions that they'd like to pose around or and potentially in the questions box uh, pose whether or not they have explored their business um, vision or mission and seen any value in that? Any questions there, Leone? No, I haven't actually got any direct questions around um, visions. Uh, did, did you want to give an example of, of one um, just to get, get people thinking, Beck, like what other yeah, for sure. others have done? Yeah. So it might be as simple, um, your vision might be as simple as um, a few words. So it might be a family orientated provider, might be your vision and the mission sorry, is sorry, Beck, well sorry, sorry, Becky, you just dropped out a little bit at the start there. Um, yeah, if you could just repeat that. Sorry, um, I suggested that a simple vision for a farming business might be, say, a sustainable, scalable, um, authentic, um, might be organic, um, provider might be the vision when your mission is around provision of fresh, um, might be sustainably grown, productively grown uh, produce to feed and clothe the nation. Is that sort of um, answering that question around, and look, the difference between a vision and a mission, do we need to have clarity? You know what, as long as we know where we're going, is it a vision, is it a mission, is it a legacy, what is it? I guess what I'm encouraging you to do is actually have a think about where you're headed and some of the words which when we explore business values now some of those words are so critically important um, around allocation of our time our energy and our our resources which um, we've seen through um, throughout the drought where resources were scant so we needed to be um, consistent um, and also really um, considered in where we put our resources. Um, Leone, any other questions or comments that have come through? Yeah, we've just had one um, just about the holistic farm management program. It was it, it's a fantastic course to actually explore um, your vision and mission in in depth. So yeah, that that's been a um, a comment more so that's popped up. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um, so I guess, and without putting the local land services team 
one. Um, so we saw, we had in an earlier slide, um, some of the things that we could fund out of the life um, of this program. Is that something that we could fall, that could fall yeah. under this support to do a program Absolutely. such as that learning? Absolutely, yeah. we'd um, yeah. definitely encourage uh, people to, if they'd like to complete one of those programs, um, holistic farm management, uh, grazing for profit, there's there's a raft of them out there. Um, we'd be interested in funding those, yes. Ah, awesome, awesome. And look, um, again, it's a, a testament that local land services are interested in people, you know, supporting people to work on their business as well as uh, as well as in it. Um, what I'd like to spend the next um, little while talking about um, are the values of your business. Um, I'd be interested if anyone wanted to make a comment in the questions or chats whether or not they had uh, explored their values um, in the past. If I, um, as we go through, and I'll show you some of the notes that we've got um, to, to allow you to explore your values, I'm pretty confident that um, a lot of the values that um, primary producers, landholders have are similar um, and also without exploring them in detail or also um, more than in detail um, uh, in a formal capacity, we have a very strong handle on our values I would, would be my suggestion and um, my experience working with producers. So the question is why are values important and when we talk about um, our um, our vision and our mission, um, the next thing we start to think about is our, our values, which is more the scaffolding. And I'm going to slip through, slip forward to a slide because I think this can be um, a really valuable opportunity to look at this. So in um, business, we have our, our vision and our mission there firmly at the top of our, our, um, our screen. It's where our business um, is hoping to head. And what we then have, I spoke about those guide rails, and I see this as the path. We talk about um, in a strategic planning capacity, the bus that we're loading people onto every day. It might just be our family, it might be employees and contractors and advisors who we're encouraging to buy a ticket for our bus every day. And what often happens is the bus sort of wafts along because this vision isn't necessarily clear, but also what's not clear um, are the guide rails. So I have brought this up at this point because one of the important guide rails or that sort of scaffolding and um, uh, uh, ready reckoner or keeper of our decisions can be our values. What we're going to talk about um, next week is our, our goals. So our goals are what's going to be um, the rubber on this road. So we talk about setting up Headed. We have our guide rails in place and we've got the bus hopefully going in the most efficient way up the middle of the path and what our goals do is allow us to reverse engineer the thinking to put um, a strategy in place to get from here, beetling away every day working in your business to, to here. So um, I now want to spend the next sort of 15 or 20 minutes talking about the, um, the value of having an understanding of, of your values because what it does do is really allows us to frame up those um, decisions. So um, if we were to um, have a think about what values um, are, they're usually a descriptor um, or uh, of the way we conduct ourselves, our business um, and life really. They uh, are usually consistent and long-term. They can come about um, either via poetry or um, involved. From a personal perspective, if you have um, were brought up in a certain way, it might be to hold respect in the highest. Typically, you'll go forward through life with respect as the highest. Um, that being said, it might be that your environment influences your values as well, where you um, have been, might be someone has been dishonest to you and it's caused you crisis or tragedy. Um, and as a result, honesty is one of the values that you hold dear uh, going forward. And look, um, your hereditary can influence that too. Say, for example, that honesty piece, in the instance you um, were are the son or daughter of a con artist, it might be that you didn't like the lack of integrity and honesty um, that 
you witnessed. And as a result, integrity and honesty in your dealings is hold, held um, in the highest. So um, that's more a personal um, uh, perspective because our value as individual influence is um, as a business, but I also think there's a really critical um, requirement to have a handle on what values our business subscribes to as well. We keep talking about this allocation of resources. At the end of the day, I love efficiency in business and efficiency, and I'm talking, I'm talking uh, time, I'm talking cognitive ability and energy, I'm talking who we give ourselves to, I'm talking who we give our money to, who we give our our soil health and nutrition to who is it and what is it that we use to frame up um, who we give our resources to. So again, um, that comment around um, providing direction and guidance, our values um, are one of those guide rails. So a little box there and in your, um, in your notes, there's a little bit more information, let me, around um, your values, including paper, a map of words that you might use to influence um, or just determine what your values might be. Um, what your values, um, why they're important um, is we can make our decisions in line with our values if we have a strong handle on where they are. Say for example, um, you've decided um, from a vision and mission perspective that a quality product is something that um, you uh, would like to put on the market and as a result um, everything the decisions you would be, make that uh, vision and mission transpires to our values or is underpinned by our values and so decision decisions that you make in business will be determined by say quality i'll give you an example of where we can see um, uh, where our values can potentially be at odds um, where it might be that you have quality and efficiency as two business players. Well, let's have a think about which one bubble to the top and when we have to make a decision, which one is going to be put in the highest? So say for example, quality, if you're making decisions based on the value of quality, um, you might cut corners, things will be done well, uh, you'll be looking for perfectionism potentially, or uh, you'll be happy to spend a little bit more money for quality inputs, you'll be happy to invest a little bit more time to make sure the outcome um, is of high quality. That being said, that piece around efficiency, in the instance um, efficiency is the priority, you might be happy with 80%. You might be happy if it saves a little bit of time or money to drop the quality. So have a think about um, what your core values are as a business and also whether or not they're actually at odds with each other or whether they can work in harmony. Um, I'm interested um, for you to put in your questions whether or not you have an example of where um, there, you have seen a lack of harmony in business. The other thing um, with um, values is if we have a solid handle on our values in our business, we can use that to make our decisions. Say, for example, loyalty um, is a value that you hold um, in high regard. It would be that you're, you are loyal to suppliers, for example. It might be that, um, I don't know, um, yeah, uh, loyal to suppliers. And interestingly, um, thinking about what um, interferes with our values, I, we saw some amazing examples of really hard decisions that were made throughout the drought where um, decisions weren't values based. The other thing why this is important is because conflict often arises where there is a misalignment of values. Say for example, you hold, um, again let's go the quality example, it's a great one, quality is important to you and you engage a contractor who's driven by efficiency. Let's have a look about work they do in your business. They're saving you a dollar and saving themselves maybe a dollar and some time and the outcome of the job isn't great in the end. So why, if we have a solid handle on our values, we can then communicate those to the people that we uh, interact with. So it might be, hey, um, and including the people we employ. So it might be, say, for that contractor example where you can say, look, um, we're going to be really honest and upfront here. The quality um, and outcome of the job is actually what we're focused on. Let's have a discussion about how we get the job done to meet that outcome. In addition, um, I find businesses that employ based on values end up with um, a 
a stronger congruence in their team where people um, will be uh, drawn to like-minded people but also some people take a job that um, mightn't be necessarily aligned with their values but if we communicate those from the outset uh, things firstly give people the opportunity to make a choice uh, whether or not our values and theirs are aligned but secondly we um, if someone's values aren't aligned uh, we put their values on notice so for example say respect or honesty or integrity are values that are critically important to your business if you have by default employed someone or engaged a contractor consultant who don't share those values uh, usually by that through that communication piece people are more likely to move their behavior towards your values I'm hoping that's making sense. I'll give you an example, a really simple one. If, for example, punctuality or quality attention to detail are um, important to you and you employ someone who, or engage someone that typically, you know, punctuality, quality, whatever, I'm pretty, um, uh, pretty slap dash. You are communicating, oh, if I'm going to John's today, I know he likes punctuality and I need to actually have my game face on because attention to detail is important to him. Does that make sense? I'm hoping, I can't see a face, I can't, um, I don't know if anyone, Leone, has made a contribution to, um, to the questions around whether or not this, um, the concept of having a strong handle on your values is important or not. Um, but the reality of all of this is having an understanding of um, our values really gives us an opportunity um, uh, to predict, um, manage our own behaviour, but also predict and watch the behaviour of others. Um, the other thing it does is we do need to work in business with people who come from all different uh, walks of life. Um, but um, when in a social situation we end up finding our tribe, don't we? We end up sort of uh, gravitating towards, you know, our people. So, um, any comments? If someone's rattling there. Is there any questions or comments? We only on any of that stuff. Um, yeah, uh, Irene's just said yes. It does make sense. Your examples bring values to life. Um, and Kate said yes, makes sense. It's difficult. It, it's a difficult topic to understand. Um, I guess from my my thoughts are um, often. Um, people focus too much on harmony, trying to get along with everyone rather than the respect mm. side of the, the ledger. And often if you ignore the respect um, and focus more on the harmony, you don't always get the best outcome in a team. Oh, I wholeheartedly. And um, leading on the edge, Leone, have you, is that where that concept come from, Rachel Robinson? Yes, um, yes, read her book. Yeah, oh, yeah. so, Guys, Leone, pop the book in the chat. Seriously, that's the perfect example. Explaining what Leone is talking about because it is gold. What happens in business is if we put harmony over respect, we um, only really hang out with the people we want to hang out with and people we get along with. At the end of the day, we do have to work with people we don't necessarily love but if we can be respectful in our dealings and hold respect at the um the highest um we can actually work with everyone the other thing and this is a little aside i love the hr space but talking about if we do position harmony uh, respect over harmony people if sorry let's go back if we put harmony over respect people won't do anything to rock the boat. So what happens is if someone's got a counter idea, they don't bring it forward. But if we have respect in the highest, people can disagree in the workplace, but it's done respectfully. So the level of innovation goes through the roof. I don't know if you've had the opportunity to communicate that book, but we can definitely put it in your note. Right? If you love this sort of thing, um, this is a book written by a lady who, uh, well, uh, Leonie might be able to help me out because my details will be fuzzy, but the youngest and only woman to um, take uh, an ex expedition to um, Antarctica. She was ex um, uh, Vic uh, National Parks um, as a, a ranger, like a very senior executive ranger, and um, yeah, took on this this role. And if you think about it, what is it? Four, five, six months down there in the dark, in the snow. You cannot leave. So you are it. So she, really, in terms of understanding. Um, 
this stuff, they had to get across it. And they also needed to make sure they had the tools to get people um, on board in their in the workplace. Um, the other thing with all of this stuff is, and we've um, been doing some research around risk management and the impact of multi-generational family businesses, but also husband team. I'm not sure if we have any people on, um, on board in that, um, in that situation. The values um, usually in a, in a partnership are quite similar, but sometimes um, we see in multi-generational family farming businesses where the values between generations can be slightly different. So what does that mean? Um, dad um, loves quality and attention to detail when the next generation, son or daughter, might see that if we can slightly alter the quality to the point where it's still acceptable but save resources, time, money, energy, then we can actually end up in a better position sustainability, profitability, productivity wise. So interesting to have a think about um, the values of the individual, um, individuals in your business and how that overlaps um, in your with your business values and also making sure there's um, that element of clarity where I know you are you go for quality here. So making sure, even if it is just with your family, that everyone is on the same bus, subscribed to the same guide rails. So um, we all need buy-in. Um, there are some things along the way that will interfere with our values. And we've all seen this situation where uh, something just didn't sit right. There was something, it might've been about somewhere where you worked. It might've been somewhere, someone you employed. It might've been a contractor that you, or a supplier that you engaged with. And there was just something about it that wasn't quite right. Um, and usually, if you wind it back and have a think about it, um, there would have been mis could have been a misalignment of values where you've got um, again the quality one. It's a great um, practical example, but it might have been um, you know someone that you didn't necessarily um, see eye to eye with from a communication perspective, and you realise when you found respect to you and there was an underlying lack of respect for might have been for someone else or for a process or whatever it might have been so it's really important and critical that um, we understand that there are things that are going to interfere with our values and a lot of conflict across um, the course of time has been born from a misalignment of those values um, I'm sure if we were in a workshop situation and I asked has anyone ever left a job or an organisation or even it might have been a social circle, it could have actually been a community group because there was just something that wasn't quite right. And if you had to think about it, it would have been that misalignment of values. Um, talking about the things that interfere with our values, um, societal pressure. So if the whole world's going um, one way, I liken it to Crocodile Dundee in New York, where he wanted to go one way and the whole world was going the other way. It was just easier to turn around. So um, if we have the really strong vision and mission, um, they will be the things that we fight for um, at any cost, where you won't go with society. But also um, the drought was a perfect example of where we saw money and fatigue interfere with values-based decision-making. Um, an example, and it was um, someone uh, was not being able to recall the exact um, um, workshop that it was at, but there was a, uh, a, a gentleman in the workshop that was brave enough to vocalise that this is exactly what had just happened to him. He um, is interested and passionate about regen farming and found himself researching and negotiating a sheep feedlot. So let's have a think about values. It was society and it's not society rather, it was money and fatigue that was making him look at decisions that didn't sit right with him, but without a lot of choice. So um, another example there um, where it, um, and potentially money, it might be where times where you make a snap decision because you didn't give um, the decision making process enough consideration and you go, wow, that sort of didn't sit well and wasn't quite right. Um, but another example of where we saw um, uh, financial pressure in the drought um, compromising that value of loyalty 
where you might have had a hay supplier or um, might have had someone who provided your animal health or your crop inputs um, that you had worked with for a number of years and then someone snuck in and was so much cheaper that you didn't really have an opportunity to leverage that value of loyalty so we did see people and then you, the loyalty bubbled to the top where you made a phone call saying i'm so terribly sorry i've had to go with this deal so there are things that um interfere with our values and our ability to make um values based decisions and if we're aware of what and then we are also more aware of what our values actually are and um and our vision and our mission and we start to build that that image, that really clear image of what our roadmap is, a lot of this stuff becomes, you know, a lot easier. And don't get me wrong, we're going to talk next week about things that um, impact farming and how we really do need to have very high level of resilience in farming because a lot of the decisions that we make um, are affected by things that are out of our control. Um, another comment, um, and I really, this really resonates with me, where if um, we are aiming for um, a level of authenticity, which um, I know from my perspective, personally and business-wise, authenticity is important to me. And if authenticity is something that you hold dear, um, what the way someone describes you or your business will be directly in your values. The question there is, if you your values genuinely um, underpin the way that you conduct yourself and make business decisions and the culture of your business, which will then influence your reputation and your action rather, that is then what um, influences your reputation. So if the way someone else describes you or your business is not in line with your values, there's something going on in here. Um, and interestingly, uh, you know, I'm going to make the guess that a lot of us are from regional communities, smaller communities, and um, talking about values, if someone is start bringing a business to town or might be moving their family to town, it's such a small world that really quickly, um, if someone is authentic, their, um, their values will be the way that they roll into town. So if you hear that Leone is moving to under the same world, and if the little uh, dealings I've had with Leone have been authentic, I'm hoping that the way I would describe Leone um, would be in line with their values. But similarly, let's have a think about your business being put on the market in 10 years time, 50 years time, or it might be that you're celebrating your business's um, centenary and you make the front cover of the land. What are the five words that are in the opening sentence of your um, report, your celebration? Or if you're going to sell it and an agent turns up or someone's saying, oh, apparently Keith's block's on the market, what's it like? What are the five things that would be used to describe your business? And are they things that you are proud of? And are they things through your culture and your action and the decisions you're, you are making, your communications and your dealings, um, are they in line with your values? And that, that's the question that we can use to get um, our values. And through this workbook, there are questions in there around um, when your business is celebrating 50 years, what are the words that are used? Um, when you're choosing a contractor or an employee, what are the things you put in the ad? What are the things you're looking for? What are the qualities that of um, another business that you look for before you partner with them? Um, what's the way you describe how business um, is conducted when you make dis business decisions what's framing those decisions and then it's those um, questions that will help you um, with this crazy list hope you can see that um, will help you um, determine what your business values are and what that will do is go a really long way towards um, framing up the first part of um, your business plan and really getting a handle on um, on that direction so um, I mentioned some of the things like if your business was to hit the market, what does the headline say? Um, how do you do this? And, um, do, you, um, do your values really genuinely underpin your dealings, but also then the subsequent reputation? And is everyone in your business, I guess, and this is not a bad way to almost close some of this conversation, is, is everyone on the same bus? So is everyone... Um, 
subscribed to the same destination, is everyone happy with the same set of guide rails? Because next week what we're going to talk about is how we can establish these goals and some um, corresponding strategies to get to here. So if you're a particularly big picture person, this is probably pretty easy for you. If you are a little bit more detail focused, you're probably down here beetling away, working really hard uh, and just, you know, pretty much knowing you're loosely headed in the right direction. But if we're big picture, we're going to put our head down and make sure our strategy is efficient. If we're um, detail focused, lean ahead and look forward and think what this vision and mission um, is that we're trying to, to aim towards. So by way of a wrap up, because I'm happy um, to take some questions if there are any, um, what we can do now through the worksheets is have a think about our, our business vision, have a think about um, our mission, um, and then also identify the core values which we can use to um, frame our decisions um, and also allocate our resources accordingly. The other thing I think we need to put on that is read um, Leading on the Edge. What do you think, Leone? It's a cracker, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Look, it's a great, great book. So definitely highly recommend. And we'll put um, a link somewhere to that book on um, on maybe the the handouts that go out to the participants today. So yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, so hopefully um, we've created a conversation. Start a conversation with you that happy next week. Um, we are going to talk about um, business planning. Um, in the next layer, which for me is around that goal development and strategy uh, development. Um, but what I would like to do now um, is um, take any questions that might be coming through there. Um, Leonie, if there um, are any. Um, does it make it easier to put a limit on our values? Um, Beck, you say five things to describe our business. That's from Kate. Oh, Kate, that's a cracker. So. I, I'm a pretty simple person um, and I, I'm i thinking if we blow out into 10, 15, 20, we're going to end up with some that are a little bit, um, uh, a little bit at odds, potentially at odds with each other. But also, um, if you are going to do more than five, which absolutely, you could do 50 if you wanted, make sure you rank them. So when you do where you need to make a choice and, and make a decision, which one? Are you putting harmony over respect? Are you putting quality over efficiency? What is going to be um, the really genuine ready reckoner for that decision? So I loosely say five. Um, is five a magic number? Absolutely not. Um, I'm even happy to have a look at what the research suggests is a more appropriate number. But I think that there's something in five that we can get enough coverage but keep the simplicity is possibly where I would go with it. I don't know. And look, I know that this, we can't necessarily have a discussion, but if anyone else has any comment or feedback, pop it in that question box and say, oh, I think that five's ridiculous or five's not enough. Or I'd like to think we had more than a couple, but I'm thinking that there's a bit of a sweet point in that five to seven. Yeah, great. Okay, now I haven't had any other questions now. Um, did, did you want to throw back to, to Keith to just wrap up or? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, from my perspective, um, I hope that uh, not many people dropped off. That's a good, good thing. Um, we are very grateful to be here on behalf of Local Land Services and, um, and the National Land Care Program, which has made it possible for us to dial in today. And But also from my perspective, thanks to those who are taking the time to work on their business but also thanks to local North Earth's local land services for having me, Leone and Keith um, and Michelle. Oh, sorry, just sorry, Beck. just one late question from Irene. So how are you suggesting that employees are aware of one's own values? Their own sorry. or the business's yeah. own? Um, so how, how are you suggesting that employees are aware of one's own values? So I guess um, if you have employees, how, I guess, how did they, no, you, yeah, you get what I mean? <laughs> we're going to tell them, we're going to tell them, um, Irene, and it, it's interesting, um, we always have the um, discussion around what drives people to be engaged in your business and people say, oh, how am I supposed to know? You ask them. But also when you, um, we 
have a work health and safety HR consulting business outside our business strategy work. And the first thing we do is be really open and upfront um, from the outset and say, hey, these are the things that are important to us. I really hope you'll come along on the ride with us. And you know what? If you end up with employees whose values aren't aligned with yours and they're out here, they're kicking out of the ballpark every chance you get, they're the ones letting um, air out of our tyres. So the short answer is how do we make sure they know? Take the guesswork out of it. Take the grey area, you communicate them. And it might be in a HR handbook, it could be a page that says, hey, welcome to our business. If you are unsure, please ask, but please allow these to frame up the decisions you make on behalf of our business. Yeah, All the way um, you spend our time and money. Heather's just um, just written a question or a statement saying put a value statement on the wall and ask them to sign off on it. Oh, I love it. I love it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, it's funny the concept of sign off on it. Buy into it. If you sign off on it, it's your business, it's your values. They have to buy into it. And you know what? We all have a choice. So if this isn't your bus, buy a new ticket. And I know that's where... Yeah, I'm going to get into HR speak here. Yeah. <laughs> but what happens is people say, oh, I wouldn't challenge him because he'll leave. If he's hanging out here, team, we we, we want to hope he leaves. It's yeah. Hard. So, yep. You know, like I think we get really nervous about communicating this stuff, but we, people actually like hope. People don't And people don't do what we expect, they do what we accept. So we actually need to be mm. walking this walk too and talking the yep. talk. So, yeah, really yes. nice question to, to wrap up yep. and hand back over to Keith. Perfect. Thank you, Bec. Over to you, Keith. Keith's just unmuting. Yep. Thanks, Bec. That's been great. Thanks, Leone, for the support. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attendance this afternoon. Um, I'm sure you would have got um, quite a lot of points out of Beck's presentation. Um, please uh, just make sure that you've um, you've enrolled for the um, the second and the third webinars, and we'll have further support materials back on our web page, um, so that we can keep this this process going um, and give you some homework for um, webinar number two and three, and um, keep those ideas coming forward about um, about your projects and we'll run through a bit more about the grant funding um, next week and the following week as well. So thank you very much everyone. All the very best. Stay safe and well. We'll see you next week, same time and um, we'll go from there. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs>